Hi everyone, this is Angela with The Bauman Letter and Ted, Clint and I are coming with another edition of Your Money Matters. Now, a common theme that we've been seeing through the markets is that these sectors, these industries that have really strong secular tailwinds have become completely oversold. Now, Ted, I know in the August issue of the Bama Letter, which actually goes out today, Monday, you cover this in renewables and you actually give your newest pick. You call it the Amazon of Renewable Energy, which is a huge endorsement, obviously. Uh, for those of you watching, if you want to get in on that recommendation, along with Ted's others, please click the link above or below. So today we're going to explore that a little bit more. And Clint, <laughs> you're up first, of course. And my first question is, how oversold are renewables right now? Is it time to jump back in um, or do we need to wait a little longer? Uh, no, I, I like what I'm seeing in renewables a lot right now. Um, signs that they, they're they oversold, that they've hit a key support level, um, and several signs that they're ready to turn back higher again. Now, one, one thing we haven't really talked about uh, on here before are retracements. So uh, it's common once you, you know, a, a stock or an ETF index, whatever the case may be, after you've had a, a big run, uh, a, the healthy thing to see is just a, a period of price consolidation, a period of sideways trading. I know this, this frustrates a lot of people um, because you think you, you bought the top and prices are just declining, but a lot of times they're just, they're, they're basing and they're consolidating those gains. And one way to, to track that progress is through these retracement levels. And I'll show you what I mean with renewable energy ETF. So this is a QCLN, this is a QClean uh, green energy ETF. Uh, going back to the start of 2020, because I wanna show you uh, this ETF went from about $16 a share at the bottom in 2020. It peaked out earlier this year around $90 a share. Uh, but now here's what I mean by the retracement level. So that's what uh, these, these bars, these lines on here represent, uh, how much that ETF has given back from that prior gain. And there's several common levels that traders like to pay attention to, and 50% is one of them. So what you can see, what I've circled here on this chart, is that at its, at its maximum um, drawdown this year, after that big run up, uh, it had given back about 50% of the gain. So it did a 50% retracement, but that's the common level for a, a, a price to find support uh, and start to rally again. So that's exactly what we've seen uh, in this instance with QClean. So now I wanna hone in um, on the shorter term just to look at the progression of, of this base to see if this looks like a good time to buy. Uh, and so that's the next chart on here. Same ETF, just uh, going back a year, so narrowing the time frame a little bit. Uh, and there's a couple of things I want to highlight on here. So the, the, this basing, this consolidation period of, of sideways trading, uh, I like what I see here with, with the green box. Um, and after we hit that 50% retracement and bounced off that level, uh, I'm looking for the opportunity to get back in. And I think we're, we're seeing that here today. There's a, a confluence of uh, different things that I'm watching. One. Uh, is that we're coming back down to this black line on here. That's the 50 day moving average. So we're, we're testing that support level after we've moved through it. Uh, but then when you look at some momentum indicators, you know, things like MACD um, in the middle panel on this chart is starting to reset back at that zero line. Uh, and then you got the RSI, the relative strength index in the bottom panel, uh, resetting at sort of that, that 50 level. That's what you want to see when you're, when you're in a bullish uptrend. Uh, and so I'm looking for a bounce off the 50 day moving average. Uh, if you want to be aggressive with this, you could you could pick it up at this level. Um, if you want to be a little bit more conservative, you could wait for a, a breakout above the top end of this boxed in range on here. So that'd be around $73 a share. But uh, either way, I think it, it's run its course and you're going to start to see these renewable energy names start to, to turn higher again. All right. So Ted, turning to you, what are some good opportunities for long-term gains? You know, obviously there's a ton of companies out there. There's a ton of small caps, a ton of startups. Uh, if that's not my cup of tea, and I'm pretty sure it's not yours either, what are some opportunities for th these longer term gains? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's important to, you know, to reiterate what you just said, which is that, you know, we've just gone through uh, a year and a half where first a lot of um, smaller companies and more volatile stocks related to the renewable energy sector first I took off like a rocket and and then crashed and it ha has since been very volatile. And I think investors are right to look for secure uh, longer term gains, particularly if they can get dividend income from it. And in that respect, I think it's useful to disaggregate the um, renewable sector into the same sort of um, 
uh, upstream, downstream, midstream schema that you see with uh, the fossil fuel sector. In oil, for example, upstream is exploration and drilling, midstream is transportation, like pipelines, downstream is refining and distribution. So for solar energy, it works like this. Upstream is uh, silicon refiners, wafer and cell manufacturers and panel manufacturers. They, they make the raw materials to gather uh, solar energy. Midstream is the utility scale uh, solar generating, the, the, the big um, solar arrays that are run uh, by big companies that are big plants and also transmission lines. So that's where the electricity is generated and transmitted. And the downstream is local and regional distributors and energy monitoring software and uh, inverters and all kinds of stuff that, that people need to, to make solar work. Now, in the U.S. market, people have tended to focus on the upstream and the downstream. Um, the problem is that the upstream, the, the, the silicon manufacturing, the wafers, the panels has become commodity, uh, sorry, a commodity industry. That means there's high volumes, lots of competition and low margins, which means it's difficult for any one company to, to generate a lot of gains uh, for any individual. There might be consolidation, there's opportunities, but really it's not a high growth uh, from a stock price perspective. The, the downstream has lots of startups and companies doing interesting things, but a lot of them are unprofitable and some of them continue to be very volatile. So I like the midstream and the midstream is essentially these big utility scale producers who generate electricity and who have uh, the capacity, you know, like any energy utility to grow, to recycle capital, uh, to expand, uh, you know, by acquisitions and also by compressing or sorry, expanding their margins. But there's a problem and that is that uh, most of these companies right now are located abroad, uh, primarily in Europe, where there's you know been the, the furthest development. Of this. And it's very difficult to invest in them if you don't have overseas brokerage accounts. Uh, they don't trade on U.S. exchanges. So we have a recommendation Clinton and I talked about, and that is a uh, an ETF. Uh, it's called the Global X Renewable Energy Producers ETF, goes by ticker RNRG. And that's a great way to buy into these offshore um, midstream renewable energy companies. And remember, they're more than solar. They could be wind. Uh, they could be hydroelectric. Uh, basically, their whole thing is that they focus on renewable energy, which is the future. Uh, right now, this ETF is trading about 20% below. It's 52% high. So there's an opportunity to get in. It yields about 2.78% uh, you know, the ETF. But if you get it at a discount now, you'll be able to, uh, you know, lock in a nice yield on cost going forward. Here's a chart that shows what I think is likely to happen. And it kind of goes back to what Clint was saying about QClean. Um, this is a line, I've, I've drawn a line showing the trajectory of the ETF before COVID. Now, now you can see that, that it was, you know, it was starting to, to enjoy secular tailwinds. People recognize that um, solar and renewable was becoming a big deal. It dropped along with everything else and it recovered, but it's kind of lagged behind, I think, some of the other technology stocks because it is really a utility scale uh, uh, operation uh, or ETF. It hit its high, but then it, it, again, it retreated uh, earlier this year in the middle of all the, uh, you know, back in February, March, when everything was pulling back. And it still remains well below where I think it needs to be. So I think it's a value opportunity. It's also an opportunity to lock in good yield. Uh, and of course, if you reinvest those yields, you can compound them and do very well over time. And one, one other thing I would mention uh, with, with that ETF as well, you, you talked about the international exposure, about 88% of the CTF is held internationally. Um, so for, for those concerned about domestic stock valuations, you get a lot of international exposure. Uh, but the other thing is with the, the volatility that we've seen, the beta of the CTF against the S&P 500 is about 0.73. So the, the market beta is one. This beta of 0.73 means there's less risk uh, historically versus what you've seen with the market. Great point. Uh, and again, if you want a more specific way to play this, please, please sign up for the Bauman letter. Uh, I mean, we have a great recommendation for you this month. It pays double the dividend of the average stock. And, and you know, it has all this, again, these secular tailwinds working in its favor. It's got a lot going for it. Uh, so sign up is risk-free. Click the link above or below. Ted, Clint, I will see you next week. Thank you so much. Great. See you next week. Bye-bye.